WordPress has the ability to schedule post publications, but how does it do that? So today I'm going to be talking about WP Cron. Hi everyone and welcome to WP Quickies, bite-sized WordPress tips and tricks in 30 minutes. Hi, I'm Will Brown, WordPress consultant and educator. I help WordPress designers and developers grow and scale their WordPress business. A little bit of housekeeping just before we start. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe button and ding that bell if you're on YouTube to get my latest video updates. Connect with me if you're on LinkedIn as well. And if you're watching me on Facebook, give me a thumbs up. You can join our Facebook group, which is WordPress Sydney Meetup. Uh, and you can follow on with the conversation. You can ask me additional questions afterwards. And also visit wpaustralia.org. That's going to show you all the WordPress meetups that are happening across Australia. And there's a link there to the WP Australia Slack group where you can chat to us in real time. I'll leave that up on the screen for a few seconds. You can have a look at that in your replay. Okay, uh, the next in-person monthly evening WordPress Sydney meetup is on the last Monday of every month at 6 p.m. We hold it at the Microsoft Reactor, which is right next to uh, when your station. And uh, this month it's on November the 28th. And I'm going to be talking about creating a content strategy. Now, with 2023 coming up, a lot of people are looking at, you know, ahead and trying to, uh, you know, just kind of plan out what they're going to do for the next year. Uh, so having a content strategy, being able to um, apply different content within uh, WordPress and syndicate that to social media, yeah, that's probably something you're probably thinking about um, doing. So I'm going to be covering creating a content strategy, what's involved at the high level, what sort of things you need to put in place for that. So come and meet me and uh, meet other WordPress uh, member community members as well. And there should be some pizza to it in the on as well. Uh, always looking for suggestions for WP Quickies. You can scan that or visit that link and send me some topics. But let's uh, jump into the stream today. Okay, so what is WP Cron? <clears throat> so WP Cron, it's the WordPress core scheduler that runs uh, date-based jobs like publishing scheduled posts, checking for WordPress core, theme and plugin updates, and backups as well. Now, how does the WP Cron work? Well, WordPress is a PHP event-driven application. Now, it's got no dedicated server component. It really does rely on requests and instructions from the web server on a per URL visit basis. So there's nothing really running in the background for WordPress. WordPress is inert for uh, for most of the time now, until a, a visitor comes on to your website page. And then it hits the web server. Web server then uh, goes out to, um, to uh, WordPress and grabs all the PHP files, which then compiles the web page and sends it back to um, the browser. And so that's the way that uh, WordPress works. It's a PHP event-driven application. So there's nothing on the server that's ticking across, and there's no underlying service or server daemon that's ticking across every second, every day, looking for stuff to do. So WordPress is mostly inert um, until someone comes and visits the website. Now, the name uh, WP Cron. It's kind of pulled from the Linux server cron service, uh, which manages all the Linux server scheduling requests. Now, on a Linux server, uh, these scheduled tasks are called cron jobs. And you'll probably see that in your cPanel or your Plesk interface. If you scroll down some of those little uh, boxes or info panels, uh, you'll, you'll come across the, the cron jobs part. So that's what it is. Now, WordPress gets around not having um, a dedicated server-based scheduler uh, by linking the WP cron request to every web page visit. So when a web uh, when a visitor lands on a WordPress website page, um, that could be either the front end or the back end if you're logged into the dashboard, there's a little bit of code that lives in a file called wp-cron.php, and that is run first uh, before WordPress does anything. Uh, and what it basically does is it basically just checks uh, the WordPress schedules to see if there's anything in there to run. So uh, a lot of people ask, you know, well, if that's the case, you know, is it slowing down the website? You know, if it's running all this code all the time? And no, not really. You can have a look at the code yourself. It's fairly easy to walk through, even if you're um, uh, not a developer. And um, all it does is it basically um, goes a goes out to the database, has a look to see if there's any jobs that need to be running. It spins through and it runs them. And these are Ajax requests in the back. So it's a very, very simple bit of code. It doesn't take very long to do it. It doesn't really affect the web server speed at all. 
Now, why WP Cron is rubbish? It might be a little bit of a controversial topic there, um, but in my uh, humble opinion, relying on visitors to land on a website page to run checks for scheduled tasks is a bit crazy. Now, I understand that WordPress doesn't have a server component, um, you know, and, and that's understandable. You know, it's an application that sits on top of the web server or adjacent to the web server. Um, you know, um, so I guess this is uh, one way of implementing it, but you know, it's not the best way. Now, if your site has meager traffic, or perhaps if your site is just brand new um, and doesn't get that many visitors, uh, then it's going to mean that the WP Cron is not going to run. Uh, so if nothing's hitting the website, either on the back end or the front end, then that bit of code is not getting run. Therefore, the WP Cron service doesn't run at all. Uh, and that means that your scheduled posts probably won't publish, uh, your backups won't run, and you know WordPress is not going to check for updates in those instances. So you know, if you are just starting out, if you have a, a small website, you've not got a big lot of traffic at the moment, and you're finding that sometimes your posts are missing their schedules, or sometimes your backups aren't running, or sometimes you know, you've know you heard on social media that WordPress 6 point whatever is out now, but you've not got an update, that's probably why. Um, so just be be aware of that. If you've got a new traffic, a new a website that's got very, very low traffic, that your shadow stuff just might not run. Now, to make matters worse, WP Cron does not run Miss scheduled jobs. So if nobody visits your website for a few days, maybe for a week or something, then that's just tough. Um, when somebody does visit again, WP Cron doesn't look back for a week and run all the, the, the missed schedules. And now you can have, there are plugins out there to do that, but you know, in essence, um, it just basically takes off and has a look to see um, what there is to run just now and not all the stuff that's missed. So another caveat, another reason why I think WP Cron is pretty rubbish. Okay. Um, so what's the alternative solution? So because WP Cron is highly unreliable, um, I use a server cron job to ping that WP Cron file uh, regularly, causing the scheduler code to constantly check for scheduled jobs. Uh, now you need two pieces of information to craft this solution together. The first one is you need to know the file path to the PHP command line executable on the Linux server. Um, now, ask your web host um, in the chat session or just raise a support ticket. Alternatively, um, you can check out the cron area in cPanel or Plesk. Sometimes, most times, um, that uh, cron job panel displays the PHP executable path. And that's what you're seeing here on screen just now. I've went in the cPanel. I found the cron jobs little icon. I've clicked on it. And at the top, it's got a few bits of information about, you know, helpful tips about how to run. Um, cron jobs and here um, we can see under the general example it's actually got the path to the server's PHP file which is slash USR slash local slash bin slash PHP. Remember this is a Linux um, server so it's not dot, a .exe if you're used to running a Windows. Um, if you're running um, your website on Windows then it will be a PHP.exe but for the most part uh, 9 to percent of people will be running on Linux servers so that's the path there slash USR slash local slash bin slash PHP and that of course might vary between your different web posts it could be something completely different for your web post so you need to check on that that's the first bit of information that you need. The second bit of information is you need the full path to the WordPress directory. Now this is where WordPress is installed on your web hosting account. Um, now you need to know this directory. Uh, this is the file path all the way from the server's root folder all the way to your account directory. Now there's going to be lots of other stuff unless you're running a VPS. There's going to be lots of other people um, probably on that server. Um, so you need to make sure that you get your, your um, file path um, for that. Now you also need to know where the publicly accessible folder is. That's usually public underscore HTML or www or sometimes it's called home. Uh, and that is that's where WordPress is installed. Now you can again you can ask the web host for this information, but it's uh, usually displayed on cPanel and Plesk. And I've got a couple of examples up on the screen at the moment. So uh, the first one on the left, this is your cPanel. They're both cPanel, actually. And usually on cPanel, there's a little uh, sidebar somewhere on the left or the right. I just give you general information about your web hosting account. And you can see if we scroll down there, it's got a little section called home directory. Uh, so that's telling you from the root of the server where all your files, where your root home directory is installed. And in this example, it's slash home slash client one. Now, uh, that's, not, um, that's not the public accessible. So usually when you go into File Manager, you'll see um, and there's an example on the right there. Uh, so this is in a cPanel again, and I've uh, opened up File Manager. 
Uh, and we can see here, this is the home path. Um, so it's the very, very top level, and it's slash home slash client one. But you can see there's a whole load of folders underneath there. There's uh, dot trash, there's cache, and there's dot C panels, lots of stuff under there. What we're looking for is the folder that contains the WordPress installation. And you can usually find that out by looking for folders like WP admin, WP dash admin, WP dash content, WP dash includes, and of course the configuration file, WP dash config.php. So here's an example here on the right hand side, you can see at the very top is the, the home folder um, for, for your account. And then if we have a look down, we can see the wp-admin content and includes folders. So if we just look up to what folder they're in, and that is in a folder called public underscore HTML. So you put them all together, um, and the full path is slash home slash client one slash public underscore HTML in this instance. And that's the directory that we need from the root of the folder all the way to your WordPress directory. Uh, now, cPanel as uh, cron jobs, it also shows examples, mostly in most uh, circumstances, uh, an example path, including the full path and the public directory where WordPress should be installed. And you can see that here. Um, so we had a look at this before with the PHP. So the first one is the USR local bin PHP. That's the PHP executable path. But it's also got um, an example of some paths to uh, where your account directory is, your home folder. So you've got slash home slash client one, which is our home directory, but then you've got slash public underscore HTML. Then you've got some other paths as well, but that's basically your public directory. So there's a few ways that you can work out um, where your public HTML or your var or your www or your home um, a public directory is where WordPress is installed. So you need those two bits of information. The next thing you want to do is you want to start to create this server cron job. So jump into cPanel uh, or Plesk. Uh, this is cPanel shown here. And click on the cron jobs uh, icon. And that's usually in advanced window under cPanel. What that is going to do is it's going to open up this little window here. It's a form. I'll just get rid of myself here. There we go. So you can see easier. Um, so uh, you can see here. Um, just under the add new cron job section, um, this is the cPanel version, of course. Um, it helpfully tells you all those uh, bits of information with PHP in your home directory, which is great. And in this example, I am setting up a server cron job to run every five minutes. Now, um, you might scare you with all these little fields, minute, hour, day, month, and all asterisk stuff, but you don't have to bother about that. Um, you can click on the common settings drop down, and it's got a whole list of um, settings. So uh, once per minute, uh, once per five minutes, once per hour, once every 12 hours, once a day, once a week, all that sort of stuff. And if you click on any of those, it's going to fill out all that information for you in those fields down below. So here, what I've done here is I have just clicked on the once per five minutes uh, drop down, and then it's filled out all the commands uh, in those fields automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about the format of, uh, of the cron job. The only thing you really need to do is at the very, very bottom, is uh, enter the command that that job needs to run. And this is where these two bits of information come together. Um, so if you have a look at the command um, uh, full, the command field down the bottom, uh, we've got slash USR, slash local, slash bin, slash PHP. That's a link to our PHP executable on the server. Then we've got a space. Then there's slash home, slash client one, slash public HTML. Um, and then that's our, our public um, WordPress directory, and then we're looking for the file slash wp-cron.php, which is the, the wp-cron file, that's the code in there. So there's those two bits, so we've got our home directory, uh, so we've got the executable to PHP with a space, then we've got our public HTML directory, then we've got a slash, and then the wp-cron.php file, and then we've got another space, and then we've got some additional commands at the end. These two additional commands at the end, what they're doing is they're basically saying on the server, don't output anything to any logs or consoles, just run it in a quiet mode. Because you find if you if you miss out that stuff, you're going to find lots of log files um, in your folder section on, on your um, on, in the cPanel and file manager, it creates lots of logs. So these two extra commands, they get rid of any logging to console and to files. So they are, so after the wp-cron.php space, and then we've got a greater than symbol, and then slash dev slash null, another space. We've got the number two, the greater than, and ampersand, and one. So all that together, that is the cron job that we are doing. Um, and we're setting that to run every five minutes. So what that's going to do, it's basically telling PHP 
to run that wp-cron.php file every five minutes and don't output anything to screen. So once that's set up, once you've saved that, um, that screen will refresh, you'll be able to check on the existing jobs. Uh, and here it is, um, here's the one that we've just set here. And um, you can see it's every five minutes and there's the command that it's gonna run uh, for those. Uh, so you can check to make sure that is okay under cPanel and cron jobs. The next thing you need to do, so after you've created your server cron job, uh, remember to disable the WordPress WP cron, the default, it's on by default, uh, by adding the following line here to your wp-config.php settings file. And what you want to do is you want to scroll down uh, until there's a line that says uh, stop editing here, add stuff above this this, uh, this line, and then just add this one line here, which is a definition, so define, and then we've got disable underscore WP underscore cron, all in capital letters, and we're setting that to true. And that tells WordPress to disable its own internal WP cron job, because we don't want the two running all the time, because we're automatically pinging it every five minutes, so we know it's going to run every five minutes anyway. And that's that. Uh, so WordPress built-in scheduler, WP Cron, uh, is um, a tied to WordPress page visits. So if you have no traffic, if you've not got a lot of traffic, WP Cron is not going to run and your scheduled stuff won't schedule. Disabling WP Cron and uh, creating a more reliable server cron job to ping that file every five minutes, it means you're never going to miss a scheduled post or backup or update ever again. Okay, that was a little bit of a technical one today. Um, a little bit of code, a little bit of digging around in cPanel and cron jobs and things like that. It might not be something that uh, that uh, is top of your mind. It might not be something you've done before. It's a once-off task as well. So once you do it, uh, I do it every time I, I push a new website to uh, to production. Uh, that's one of the things that I do. It's I've got in my checkout check down list is uh, I then go into the server and create that cron job. I just need to do that once then it just sits there every five minutes and pings forever, which means you'll never miss a WP schedule again. Any questions, you can post them to the chat. Uh, we've got uh, John, thanks for sharing. No problem, John. I'm happy to share all my stuff. Uh, there's my details. Um, so I, um, uh, you can get me at willbrown.com. Um, I'm mostly on LinkedIn these days, Will Brown, on, Will Brown AU, on Instagram and on Twitter as well. Sometimes I have some of my rants. Uh, please do connect with me if you haven't done already. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and say hi, to say that you've come from the WP Quickies. Uh, I can't see anything else on the chat, so that's okay. Let's just see what's happening next week. So next week, uh, I'm going to be talking about the WordPress heartbeat. Um, so what the WordPress heartbeat is, uh, how you can control it, what it's used for, all that good stuff. And so thanks very much for watching, and I'll see everyone next week. Bye, everyone.